Here, at the British Food Manufacturing Industries Research Association at Leatherhead, Surrey, the search for the perfect pickling onion is just one of the many aspects of research carried out by this independent organisation. The reason for this research is a matter of national prestige, for nearly all the best pickling onions come from abroad, mainly Holland and Egypt. Why, pray, shouldn't the cold roast beef of old England be served with English pickled onions? The peeled onions are first steeped in brine for a few days before being washed in cold water. The demand these days is for a mild flavour, and this is achieved by using a milder vinegar, which unfortunately does not contain quite enough acetic acid to destroy all the bacteria and moulds present. The ingenious answer, thought out by research chemist John C. Dakin, is to destroy the remainder by pasteurising them in hot water. The onion liquor is tested by steam distillation for acetic acid content. Here, samples which have previously been infected with bacteria are tested to see that the pasteurization has been effective. Statistical analysis is important, but the final word lies with the tasting panel who are breathing full blast down the neck, do you mind, of a problem of importance to farmers, manufacturers and, of course, the notoriously fickle, pickle-fancying public. It has an experimental purpose, this diving instruction, and living underwater in a perspex house is something which excites the scientists. This bell-shaped bubble was built to demonstrate such possibilities to the visitors at the London Boat Show. Recent experiments in underwater living included Frenchman Jacques Cousteau's month-long stay in a five-roomed house 50 feet under the Red Sea. And here it is, a weird, watertight world scanned by a nearby closed-circuit TV camera. Extra air can be obtained by contact with the surface controllers. Living in this kind of atmosphere doesn't harm a man's appetite, and that's something which can't be controlled by a flick of a switch. That's when divers become underwater waiters and have to make a special lunchtime trip down to the dome. There's no complicated procedure for getting in and out of the dome. It's simply a matter of swimming underneath and coming up into the airlock. Tony here is suffering from the after-effects of whooping cough and he's about to become the subject of a new experimental shortcut cure. Before Tony receives the decompression treatment, a long spell under atmospheric conditions which prevail at 14,000 feet up in the sky. And this is the decompression chamber, the only one put to this use in Britain. Formerly used to acclimatise pilots in training, it's now the testing ground for new health experiment. Here, Nurse Patricia Crabb shepherds Tony, Brenda and baby Marilyn inside. The nurse's fountain pen might leak under the pressure. So she hands it over before the chamber is sealed up. Now the occupants are climbing at the rate of 600 feet a minute. At the equivalent of 14,000 feet, the lowest pressure is maintained for 45 minutes. Throughout the test, contact is maintained with the ground. The descent from the upper regions takes place gradually, 24 minutes to reach normal atmospheric pressure. For the patients, it's just an exciting interlude in playtime. But doctors throughout Britain await eagerly the results of the strange ascent. At a razor blade manufacturer's in Isleworth, Middlesex, we take a close look at just some of the aspects of research that go on behind the scenes into the apparently humdrum business of shaving. An average face, that thing that peers dejectedly back at us from the mirror each morning, sprouts approximately 25,000 separate bristles. Each beard has its own growth characteristics and can be used to identify an individual as surely as Scotland Yard can by fingerprints. To study in close-up the exact action of the razor as it mows its way through the stubble, a slow-motion camera is focused through magnifying lenses and follows the sweep of the razor. The black beard jungle, or a growth of any other colour, looks a thoroughly disenchanted forest under the microscope. Some of the hairs are triangular, others rectangular, some crescent-shaped and even one or two oval ones. A proper blasted heath, in fact. This electrical attachment records the exact number of strokes per shave. From behind a see-through mirror, a backroom boy in the true sense times the operation. He assured us that the average man removes seven yards of hair per shave. The total shavable population of this country removes 60,000 miles of the stuff from 100 acres of hirsute cheek and jowl. Care for a smoke? Down at a Bristol tobacco factory is the heaviest chain smoker in the world, a device which inhales from four cigarettes at once. The apparatus is a reconstruction of the human lung, 
A siphon principle simulates the average rate of puffing. The burning rate and the chemical analysis of smoke are recorded. This enables scientists to compare the qualities of new tobaccos, all to help ease the cigarette shortage. Yes, four at a time. Seems a shame, doesn't it? There are so many road accidents that only by strict care can you avoid riding with death. Look, no hands. But no hands in this case is a road safety development for the future. The car is steering itself by following radar gadgets along the road. Tests like this are conducted and filmed by the Road Research Laboratory at Crowthorne in Berkshire. Here's another experiment to decide what happens to a car and its occupants during an accident. The car in this case will travel at about 40 miles an hour and crash into a massive barrier weighing 100 tons. Quite a jolt, as you'll see. Again, then let's slow it down a bit. As you can see, there's no future in accidents like this. But let's hope, through the efforts at Crowthorn, that in future cars will never go off the rails.